All right, so I just wanted to do a quick video on record keeping and, and keeping your books and keeping track of everything and what my numbers are. So ever since Savannah, since the LT50, I've kept a record of everything I've sold. So this is all lumber. This is all, all of our lumber sales from in Savannah. And some other notes. I don't remember what the totals were. I remember thinking it was like eight or ten thousand dollars somewhere in there. Um, I, I didn't keep track of board foot cut or hours. Then I just took how, took track of how much um, how much money we made sales. Uh, there was also quite a bit of inventory we took with us that we haven't sold. And, but the other thing is that was a different market. I was selling live edge, a lot of live edge slabs and two dollars a board foot was on the low end most things were three to four sometimes five six dollars a board foot so up here is not at all the case i've been doing pretty much portable work i've sold a couple things but nothing nothing to be worried about and the reason i'm doing this now is i've had the mill for about a year we bought it in september of last year and again it, i said before it's about forty thousand dollars and you know you can look that up that ain't that ain't secret um the, we got a loan through Farm Bureau's insurance company, and it was a $4,000 down payment. We paid $685 a month. I think it's around there, $685 a month. So I've had it for 12 months. So in payments towards the mill, it's been $8,224. Uh, I've had, what was it, another 19, $1,942, so about $2,000 in expenses. And that's blades, sharpening, bearing, stuff like that. I think I bought the lube miser with that. Um, so that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at. So in one year, one, the first, I'll say in the first year, the first year, I've got 270.8 hours on the meter. I've cut 90,600 board feet and I've made $18,845, uh, at least in sales. So that works out to be about right at $70 an hour, which is my rate. So there's some give or take, because some of these hours are stuff that I cut that I wasn't, wasn't charging, but then also I charge customers you know, for downtime or stack in, or, or if there's other stuff that I'm waiting on them. So I generally charge customers more time than what actually gets registered on the clock um but then uh, you know like i said so that, that just happens to work out about the same so that's uh 270 hours the eighteen thousand dollars eighteen eighty five divided by ninety thousand board feet that works out to 20.8 cents so on average the amount of volume i've cut versus how much money i've taken in is 20 cents a board, 20.8 cents a board foot, uh, which I think is pretty good. I, I'm obviously anybody like to make more money, but I'm certainly I'm I'm happy making $70 an hour for the amount of time I put into it. Um, you know, and and for me to be able to provide that kind of um, rate, 20 cents an hour on average, 20 less than 21 cents a board foot, um, I I think is pretty good. I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with being able to provide that and that just makes it that much more comfortable you know for the few customers that kind of scoff at me when I say 70 an hour um, this is why because I'm productive and could I be more productive certainly could I be less productive certainly but these are my numbers and these are my averages so and I've been telling people I average 300 board feet an hour but I haven't actually done that math so So there you go. I average over the life of the mill, 334 board feet an hour. I, I think that's pretty good. And that's, again, that works out tw less than 21 cents a board foot. Um, now my rate, that's me in the mill. That doesn't include any, uh, any helpers. There's, you know, a lot of times, most times customers will do the help themselves. Uh, sometimes I'll, you know, bring, bring a helper guy with me um, but I don't include those numbers with this. So just me running the mill, those, those are my numbers. Now with my expenses, um, 
obviously the the payments and you know the down payments the monthly payments and the stuff I have bought uh, eight thousand two hundred twenty four dollars take that off the eighteen thousand uh, in sales that's eight thousand six hundred seventy nine seventy nine dollars in I guess profit that's essentially my income um, after that now that's not very much over a year uh, I guess the hindsight is the first I didn't get my first job until January 1st you know I had it in September that's what three four months away before I got my first job and even then it didn't really pick up until March so that's six months six months of, of actual working that I made eight thousand dollars and of course that's the expenses is for the whole year and that includes my down payment so that's probably so over the last six months I've had four thousand forty one hundred dollars in uh, payments plus some expenses let's say let's just say five thousand dollars that's about thirteen thousand dollars in profit over the last six months so the eight thousand dollars that just includes the losses from the first six months uh, just because I was obviously paying for the mail and I wasn't really getting the work so the last six months I've made um, thirteen thousand dollars which still isn't that I mean that's still two thousand dollars a month but you gotta also remember this is just my saw milling business now I also do contract renovation and I've been doing a lot of that as well and and been doing pretty well with that and, and basically I've been using that to keep busy and I'm just take whatever jobs I can um, so I'm not doing I'm not sawmilling like every day this I may sawmill a couple two three days a week um, I mean sometimes it's six days a week sometimes it's none so it just really depends on the week wherever it comes and goes but that's the average you know over the course of, of essentially the first uh, the first year and I mean I think I think the numbers are pretty good and uh, I did want to share that with you you know uh, hopefully that's helpful to you and give you some point of reference on on our situation and what we're able to do and again this is with an LT 50 wide diesel certainly uh, could be le more productive if I had like a 70 or or probably less productive if I had a cheaper mill you know uh, 40 or 35 um, but then again the expenses would go up and down accordingly so um, I don't know maybe some of the other guys with the 70s and the 35s and the 40s maybe some of those guys can chime in on what their actual uh, portable sawmill numbers are because because uh, I don't know I'd be curious to see what the actual expenses and, and sales are um, you know how those compare to see if it um, to see how they how they work out so this is me and my situation and what we've what I've been able to do um, and certainly I'd be able to get more sales uh, or I, I expect to get more more work sawmilling work in the coming years um, and yeah so it should only get better uh, I again I also feel like I'm on the low end of hourly rates uh, I feel like 70 an hour is kind of is kind of operating costs you know between making my payments uh, fuel blade charges uh, ex you know truck wear and tear all that stuff um, I feel like that's not really leaving a whole lot for me in profit uh, but I'm I mean I'm doing all right I mean I'm just we're just you know trying to get the business going so uh, it, it's hard not many small businesses uh, make it after a couple of years and it takes a while to, to actually start churning profit so uh, you know I, I've I'm certainly feeling good about it, how everything's going. And at any rate, wanted to share the numbers and hopefully that was helpful. And thanks for watching and we'll catch you later.